I'm answering the 25 most commonly asked questions from someone that is just starting their lawn mowing business. Let's dive into it. We're going to watch some B-roll of our team actually mowing, weed eating, edging, blowing, spraying, and doing some landscaping. So if you guys have any questions, leave a comment below and let's dive into it. So number one, how do I register my lawn business legally? This is a great question. So what you're going to want to do is check with your state to see if there are ever any regulations that you need to follow. Um, I know for us, you definitely will want to file a DBA, which is a doing business as. And then um, we also file an LLC just to protect ourselves in case there is an issue down the road with a customer or an employee. Uh, number two, what licenses and permits do I need to operate a lawn mowing business in my area? Some states do require a business license. If you're doing fertilizing and weed control, then you're definitely going to want to get certified in license application. Uh, But for the most part, we live in the state of Texas and there's not a whole lot of licenses and permits that we actually need. Just the DBA paperwork and the LLC and you're pretty much ready to go. How much, number three, how much should I charge for lawn mowing services? Now, this is a loaded question, okay? So uh, I think at first, when you're just starting out, just call your local competitors, get two or three quotes, be somewhere in the middle, or maybe just a little bit under so you can actually win the job. Now, once you actually start to do business, then what you want to do is start to track your time on every single property. Once you start to track your time and get that data, then you'll be able to build a blueprint on on knowing how long exactly each job takes. So that way you can build a customer appropriately. A good rule of thumb is whatever you would pay a team member, triple that. That's what the customer needs to get built. All right, moving on. Number four, what equipment do I need to start a lawn mowing business? Now, this is also a loaded question. I like to be very, very scrappy. We built our first lawn mowing company that now does $630,000 in annual revenue by going on Facebook Marketplace and buying a mower for $100 and I bought a used truck for $4,000. That's all of our personal money that we put into the business up front and now it's making us well 20x times that uh, in cash flow each year. So all in all, don't get fancy with it. Just get what you need and make sure you put it to use as best as you can. You don't want to buy equipment that just sits in the garage or shop and not get used. Focus on your specific type of property that you want to do or a specific type of service you want to do and uh, just increase that revenue stream. So that way you can put the equipment to work constantly. All right, number five, where can I find reliable suppliers for lawn mowing equipment and supplies? This is a great question. You definitely want to use once you get rolling. I think at first just using a residential mower will get you started, but eventually you're going to need reliability. Once you start to get a couple handful of customers, you want to make sure you're there reliably throughout the summer, winter, fall, spring and fall uh, seasons. So uh, definitely want to use your local supplier. Uh, What we would recommend is honestly, whoever the closest is, because you're going to be going there constantly. You're going to be having to repair the mowers, the equipment and all of that stuff. So just pick your local one and maybe do a little bit of research. Sometimes they're a steel dealer. Sometimes they're a, a echo dealer. Figure out which one you would prefer. Do some research on YouTube and choose a vendor and supplier. Number six, how do I create a business plan for my lawn mowing company? Um, this is a great question. I don't think we actually really officially sat down and, and said, okay, this is what we want to do um, in our first year. I think it was just, hey, let's try to get some customers and figure this thing out. How do we hand out a few flyers, a few hundred flyers and get a couple customers and just start this thing? But once you get into year two, three, and four, you definitely want to create some kind of business plan that will uh, project in the future how many dollars you want to spend in marketing and where you want to take the business. Number seven, what insurance do I need to protect my lawn mowing business? Great question. So many lawn care companies out there, they're just the Joe Schmoes on the side doing this for beer money, side money, whatever you want. Become professional. Once you start to get a few customers, separate yourself. Be uh, more reliable, professional. Now, how do we do this? Well, number one, you want to get general liability insurance. This will cover you if there's any damage done on the property or if you damage something on the customer's property. Um, it'll be covered by general liability insurance. Number two, 
You want workers' compensation. The minute you start hiring employees, you must have workers' compensation. Uh, The reason for this is if somebody gets hurt while on the job, they need to be covered with medical bills. That is very, very important. You'll also want commercial auto insurance once you start driving trucks and vehicles to make sure that you are covered in that insurance protection. Okay, number eight, how can I effectively market my lawn mowing business to attract customers? What we have found is the good old-fashioned door hanger flyers has been one of the foundational marketing pieces that we've used, and it doesn't cost a lot of money as long as you have a printer at home. Um, Honestly, what we did is we went on Facebook Marketplace spent $25 and actually bought a printer. And it wasn't even color, I don't think. And oh no, it was, it was color, but we just printed off literally pieces of paper and we went door to door and we just slipped them in the, in the door crack. So that way the customer could see it. Um, that's like a really low budgeted way to start attracting customers. You could also get in Facebook groups. Um, there's a whole plethora of ways to market. Uh, definitely want to put your vinyl uh, sticker logo and phone number on the truck once you start rolling. But this is really mainly for if you're when you're just getting started. Just print some pieces of paper off on the, on your printer. Super cheap way to get customers. All right, number nine. Should I offer additional services like fertilizing? or weed control. Now, this one is a lot more uh, head knowledge. You have to take a few tests uh, through the Department of Agriculture, depending on what state you're in. All of them do require you to be licensed. Um, This is a little bit uh, more advanced. We do offer fertilizer weed control, but we didn't start to offer it until year two. Um, I probably would not, I think you can still fertilize, but you cannot do the weed control for compensation if you're not licensed. If you're a go-getter, definitely I'd say do it. There's a lot of profit in that. Uh, But I would say if you're just starting out, just focus on the mowing side and landscaping because all you really need is some hand tools, some rakes, and you can really do some big jobs, um, you know, as far as like the landscaping goes. on installing mulch and rock and all that stuff. All right, number 10, how do I handle customer complaints or dissatisfied clients? So this is what will separate you from all the rest is when there is a pain point or an issue with the customer, how do you handle handle it? It's not a matter of if, it's a matter of when. There will be times where you have customers that are upset. You have to handle them cordially. You have to, to be there to serve the customer and go above and beyond. All right, number 11, what safety measures should I take for my employees and clients. So I think this is a big one. This, um, yeah, you, re- you really just definitely want to look into the manuals of maybe your equipment, um, maybe on YouTube, just figure out like what are, what type of safety training do I need to do for my employees and for my clients? Um, we're using high powered equipment that have sharp blades on it. So you definitely want to make sure you're communicating the proper uh, safety measures like wearing eye protection and ear protection anytime you are operating uh, machinery. Number 12, how do I estimate the time and cost for each lawn mowing job? Well, we kind of went over this earlier, but you basically just need to win the job. Just If you have to do it for free on your first cut or two, just do it. Figure out how long it takes So that way you can charge appropriately because we are in a business of selling time. We are selling services, but it's really trading our time for money uh, in the service-based industry. We're selling basically time. All right, uh, number 13, can I use subcontractors to handle extra work during busy periods? You absolutely can. What's nice about that is they have their own insurance and they have all of their uh, stuff that they need. Uh, They're basically their own business. You're just subcontracting out that work. Um, That is an option. If uh, you start getting behind, definitely want to look into that. Number 14, what are peak seasons for lawn mowing and how can I prepare for them? Great question. So spring rush, always a big time for uh, lawn mowing. What I would uh, specifically recommend is getting your marketing material in check before the spring rush comes so you can take full advantage of that. And then also uh, over hiring employees when you get to that point, because you're going to be so busy with new jobs coming in, you're going to need the extra hands. Number 15, how can I keep track of my business expenses and revenue effectively? So you want to make sure you're tracking all of your receipts. So that way you can use them as write-offs at the end of the year. And you also want to make sure you have a good CRM, whether that be QuickBooks, Service Autopilot, Copilot, it doesn't matter. Yardbook is free. Just get a CRM so that way you can make all of that money uh, 
stream come in one area so that way you know how much you are making. It's really important to track your numbers. Is it better to charge, number 16, is it better to charge by the hour or per job for lawn mowing services? So for lawn mowing services, what we do is we track our time on every single property and we basically figure out, okay, this job takes us 30 minutes, so we want to make 80 an hour, so it's going to be $40. Now, when it comes to landscaping jobs, we do charge uh, per job, but it's really based on the hour. Again, we're trading, um, we're selling our employees time for money. Number 17, how do I handle scheduling and routing efficiently? I just did a video on this, uh, actually, like literally yesterday. Um, definitely want to go check that out if you haven't already. But basically, you don't want to, you want to leave room for margin in your schedule. You don't, if you have five days a week and you only have one truck, you don't want to fully max that truck out with two guys in the truck five days a week. Why? Because it's going to rain, the truck's going to break down, and your employee's going to be sick. So you do not want to max it out. You want to probably get to maybe 80 to 85% capacity. So that way you have 15% room for error when things like that happen. Number 18, what are the best ways to build a strong customer base and gain repeat clients? It all comes down to quality and serving the customer. If you do a good job, word of mouth will spread and you will retain long-term retention with your clients. Number 19, should I invest in eco-friendly lawn mowing practices? Um, You can if that is your focus. Um, Obviously, our focus is just doing a good job and providing a good service, quality service to the customer while keeping the cost low. And we found to do that with gasoline powered equipment in our area. Number 20, how do I handle invoicing and payment collections from clients? The quicker you get paid, the better. So however you can get your money and cash flow soon, that's great. I probably would not recommend monthly billing. Again, sooner you get it, sooner you get paid, the sooner you can take that money and go multiply it. Number 21, what are some common mistakes to avoid when starting a lawn mowing business? Some of the most common mistakes that I see are not charging enough, especially when you're just starting out. I know it's hard. I know it's tough. You want new customers. You want to fill your schedule, but just don't sell yourself short. Know your worth. Know what other companies are charging and be somewhere in that ballpark. Number 22, how can I stand out from competitors in the lawn care industry? Very simple. Put logos on your trucks. Wear uniforms. Be professional. Tuck your shirt in. Say yes, sir. No, no, ma'am. Have good grooming standards. Have somebody that answers a phone. Uh, charge cards on file. Be professional. Have a CRM that you can keep the job notes. Serve the customer as best as you can. Number 23, is it necessary to have a website and social media presence for my business? I would say website, absolutely. Social media, eventually. Number one, you want to get your website up and running as quickly as possible. If you don't know how to build one, go on YouTube, search Wix. That's what we did. We built our website. You can go check it out at militarylawncuts.com. It, I built it all from scratch, didn't pay anybody anything, and I, and I used, used YouTube University. Number 24, how do I hire and train employees for my lawn mowing company? Um, there's a lot of great videos out there on YouTube. I've created a few, uh, but yeah, it's it's we use Indeed. You can uh, just go out there and recruit. If you see somebody at Home Depot, that's really great. You can offer them a job. And how do you train them? Eventually, what I do is I say, okay, what are the questions from the customers and the employees that I keep constantly getting? And I kind of put all those questions in a training binder and I say, okay, I need to answer all of these questions before they ask me that when I have a new team member. Um, That's kind of how I do that. Okay, number 25, the final question, what are the tax implications and deductions for lawn mowing business? Basically, everything that you purchase for your lawn care company, lawn service business, whatever it is, um, is a write-off and you definitely want to have a good tax accountant at the end of the year so that way you're not having to pay an arm and leg for taxes. All right, that is a wrap. We finished it. Guys, if you have any questions in regards to how to price your lawn service, I did a really in-depth training. I will put the link in the description below, but I actually give our blueprint to our mowing customers that we use the exact blueprint for pricing based off of the time it takes with our equipment. We share that blueprint with you. And I also go through a step-by-step video on how we actually got to those numbers. So that way you can do that for your specific area. Um, the course, I uh, put together a course, there is a fee with it, but check out the link in the description below if you're struggling on how to price your services. Also, if you're looking at getting into the 
fertilizing and weed control services. Great profit margin on that side of the business. Highly recommend doing that if you haven't already. Um, Go ahead, check out the course below. Again, I put that together for you guys um, and it's there as a resource if you need it. Guys, if you found value in this video, please hit the subscribe button. It helps us reach more great business owners just like yourself and tell other people. We'll see you guys next time. Thanks.